Okay, this video series is going to be a video series on a little known fact about the Gettysburg Battlefield, and it's going to be entitled The Gettysburg Electric Trolley. Now, not many people who visit Gettysburg realize that at one time, an electric powered trolley actually made its way from the point that we're looking at now through the town of Gettysburg down into and around and over the Gettysburg battlefield and then made its way back into town. And we're going to talk about that in this series of one of the secrets of the battlefield of Gettysburg and we're going to call this the Gettysburg Electric Trolley Part 1. Now a little bit about the Gettysburg Electric Trolley. It was the Gettysburg Electric Railway Company was chartered on August the 4th of 1891. Um, it was incorporated on July 28th, 1892. And in January of 1893, the borough of Gettysburg granted the Gettysburg Electric Railway Company right away on all principal streets in the town. Now, the railway secured the right of way uh, west and north of the borough of Gettysburg. Um, but the but tr tracks were never built there. Now the rail bed construction of the trolley began on April the of 1893. An electric power company, which sat right here, where um where this building is today, um, and this electric power plant had actually brought brought power to the borough of Gettysburg uh, in 1893 for the first time. Now the the trolley also crossed at one point the round top branch which was a full size steam operated railroad and we're going to look at that in a later video. Now this uh, trolley was very uh, debatable right from the beginning and in fact there was a 1896 Supreme Court which was the US versus the Gettysburg Electric Railway that for the first time in our country used eminent domain for historic preservation. Of course, the railway here existed from 1896 until its closure in 1916, and then in 1917 uh, the tracks were removed. As I said, it was very controversial right from the beginning, and in this video series we are actually going to take you on the route of the original Gettysburg Electric Trolley through the town and onto the battlefield. We're going to show you some remnants of where the trolley bed once was um, and then we're going to share photographs of either the trolley itself or the tracks that went across the battlefield. This has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley Part 1 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Trolley Part 2 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And the power plant that once stood here where this building was, the tracks actually came out of the building and headed in this direction along the street until it got up here to Chambersburg Street. Um, at that time there was a, a large hotel that st stood where the 7-Eleven was and the trolley made a left onto what is today Chambersburg Street right um, in front of the Henry Huber house which we can see here uh, in the distance. So we are again, we are walking on what is the old uh, Gettysburg electric trolley um, and we're following the route as it made its way down toward the battlefield. In our next video we'll pick it up near the town square. As I said the trolley went up here and then made a left onto what is today Chambersburg Street until it got down to the Chambersburg Square. This has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley Part 2 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Trolley Part 3 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm here at this uh, historic Gettysburg Square and on Part 2 we left off with the Gettysburg electric trolley coming up to the square. Now when it got to the square, it proceeded down Baltimore Street, past the historic David Wills house, and headed on this side of the street uh, all the way down Baltimore Street. And as we walk down Baltimore Street uh, in the next few videos, we're going to take a quick look at some of the, the historic buildings uh, that it might have passed, or, or would have passed, rather. Um, and 
there were basically two types of trolley tours. There was a, a tour which allowed the uh, rider to be in the car and drive through the battlefield. And then there was a little bit more of expensive tour which allowed the riders to be accompanied by a licensed guide. Uh, and they would get out on a few spots and wander around. This is one of the buildings here, the historic Fonstock uh, Brothers building that the electric trolley passed uh, on here, on, heading southbound on the western side of Baltimore Street. Also, the historic Adams County Courthouse, which was built in 1859, was also one of the buildings that it would have passed. And ironically enough, this building also used as a field hospital. Well, the tracks laid right here in front of this building. And over in front of the Adams County Courthouse today is a wayside marker that has a photograph taken of the Adams County uh, Courthouse in 1915. And if you look in front of the courthouse right here, you can actually see the trolley tracks. And I will post that photograph on a later video. Now again, um, as the riders were on these particular trolleys, what may have been happening at the time as the trolley proceeded down this road is that if it was the guided trolley tour, that guide may have been again to explain the significance of the different buildings that the electric trolley would have passed, such as the courthouse being used for a field hospital. Also, uh, the compiler office there with the Penelope Cannon, which we did a video on earlier. Of course, the church here that Abraham Lincoln attended, and many of the other buildings that the trolley passed as it headed south on the western side of Baltimore Street. So you can get a little bit of an idea uh, that if you were able to go on this tour between 1896 and 1916, uh, what the rider may have experienced. This has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley, Part 3, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Part 4 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And in Part 3, we left coming in this direction down Baltimore Street. We had passed the courthouse. And the electric trolley continued here on the western side of Baltimore Street um, and passed, again, more historic buildings like the Andrew Woods House, which is here on the right. Andrew Woods, as we shared in an earlier video, was a carriage trimmer. Um, and again, uh, the riders of this particular trolley could see all the different historic homes that were here and witnesses to the battle. Tilly, Hal Tilly Pierce's house, uh, the Shriver house, um, of course further up the road would be the Garlock house and the Garlock house was actually um, the home where a, a general was actually hid in a woodshed behind uh, the house during the battle. And of course, the electric trolley would continue to proceed. Ironically enough, this is almost the identical route uh, that Abraham Lincoln uh, rode on horseback on November 19th, 1863, as he came to dedicate the cemetery here in Gettysburg. And I'm sure uh, that any guided trolley tour would have mentioned that uh, in the in the tour. Of course, here this is. Um, the house of uh, the Henry Garlock house in which General Shimifeng was uh, hid in a woodshed behind it. it. Sits here at 321 and 323 Baltimore Street. And again, as the trolley proceeded down southbound here on Baltimore Street, you have to excuse the traffic, but it would it would proceed again to follow the basic same parade route as Abraham Lincoln did uh, on November the 19th, 1863. And this right here is kind of the heart here where Baltimore and South are today. Of course, right here is the Sweeney House, 
uh, which is one of the more popular houses in town, has a lot of battle damage still left to it. Today it's called the Farnsworth House. Um, across the street is Twin Sycamores, and of course the sycamores that are stand here and in the distance over there are witness trees uh, that Abraham Lincoln passed by on the afternoon of November 19th, 1863. Here's the Sweeney house here with the bullet damage done on the side of the house. And again, the trolley would proceed southbound on Baltimore Street. Um, we're going to pick it up as it would go down Baltimore Street and then bend to the left and follow Baltimore Street. We're going to pick it up uh, near the East Cemetery Hill area uh, on our next part. This has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley Part 4 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Part 5 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we came from our last video in that direction heading here on Baltimore Street. Now the Gettysburg electric trolley uh, began to go up Cemetery Hill uh, here and it was in this area uh, of the National Cemetery and East Cemetery Hill where the Gettysburg electric trolley made its first stop. Uh, if you had paid for the more expensive tour you would have got off the trolley and went through the National Cemetery and on East Cemetery Hill area led by a guide. And then you would pick the trolley up over on the Tawny Town Road. The trolley would actually f uh, go further beyond up Baltimore Street before bearing to the right and going on the outskirts of that time, which was the Evergreen Cemetery. And we're going to show you the old trolley path. Um, it did pass by some more historic buildings like the Soldiers Orphanage building uh, right here uh, before proceeding up to the National Cemetery and East Cemetery Hill. Then there are a few photographs which I will post um, from this area showing the Gettysburg electric trolley on the tra trolley tracks which sat here on the road. Uh, passing by the cemetery and East Cemetery Hill. Now I do want to point out that in those photographs, this iron fence that you see today around the National Cemetery once sat on the other side of the road in front of East Cemetery Hill. It was moved here later and this is as we talked about in an earlier video, the Sickles witness fence. This was the fence that sat around Lafayette Park in Washington, D.C. when Daniel Sickles, Sickles rather, murdered his wife's lover. The fence was brought here to Gettysburg, probably as a reminder to Dan Sickles that he got away with murder, put on East Cemetery Hill, and then later moved to the National Cemetery. This trolley path proceeded up this direction, made its first stop here uh, at the Evergreen National Cemetery and East Cemetery Hill area. Now the trolley itself proceeded further down just above the rise here and then it would bear off to the right before going to the outskirts, by the outskirts rather, of the Evergreen Cemetery. And we're going to walk right up here to the gatehouse and then end this part before continuing it on part six. And of course, the gateway was one of the more famous buildings in 1863, and there's plenty of photographs of it uh, that had sustained battle damage. So this has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley. Part 5 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Trolley Part 6 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And our last video, Part 5, we just came over this hill. The Gettysburg Electric Trolley would then proceed southbound here on the Baltimore Pike. And they would pass this 5th New York Light Artillery Battery that was uh, commanded by Captain Elijah D. Taft. This battery actually on July 2nd fired these guns in this direction 
um, just beyond Culp's Hill, they had a duel with Latimer's Confederate battery out on Benner's Hill. Um, one of the guns actually ruptured. And then, of course, on July 3rd, uh, Elijah Taft's battery would fire in a westward direction uh, from the Longstreet's assault pickets charge action. Uh, this, this battery here was uh, engaged very hotly on July 2nd and July 3rd of 1863. Uh, it was one of the only batteries that were actually placed here uh, in the cemetery on the evening of July 1st as the Union troops uh, made this their rallying point. Now Evergreen Cemetery in 1863 was only nine years old. There wasn't as many graves as there are today and of course this whole section of the cemetery all the way down the pike there to the hotel in the distance beyond the trees is new. Its border in 1863 was just beyond this tree right here and that's where the trolley then turned to the right um, and it went along the outskirts of the cemetery and we're actually going to walk you see this little hump here in the ground this is actually part of the original trolley bed the trolley then turned here after Elijah, Elijah Taft's battery turned and went along the outskirts of the cemetery so the cemetery the evergreen cemetery would have been on the hill to its right there is a famous photograph taken from about right here in 1917 and these twin headstones that you see here in the distance are the Bushman headstones and I will post that picture you can actually see the 1917 uh, trolley tracks have been ripped out of the cemetery and you can see the two Bushman stones uh, in the distance and right now we're just about to get back on you can see the Bushman stones here the trolley then proceeded right here and uh, ironically enough there is a bit of a clearing here today where there are no where there is nobody buried where the original trolley tracks uh, were placed of course I'm sure that as the trolley uh, made its way any passengers that did not get the extra tour would have been told about the action on Cemetery Hill uh, and the Evergreen Cemetery on the evening uh, of July 1st 1863 the trolley then proceeded uh, southbound here just on the outskirts of the Evergreen Cemetery of course all this is a newer a section that was added at a later date. We are now on what was the outskirt of the cemetery uh, from 1896 up to its demise in 1897. The trolley would proceed this way and then it would bend to the right and it would exit right at the Towny Town Road and that's where we're going to pick it up on our next video. This has been the Gettysburg Electric Trolley here at the Evergreen Cemetery on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, Part 6.